Snow. Snow is already making a comeback on the channel. I know we just played a snow deck last week, but I swear today's deck isn't too much heavy on snow. Besides the point, we are playing Mono Black Devotion yet again. So Big Brother Gary is coming home and we're gonna welcome him home with some open arms. Uh, being on YouTube for almost two years now, playing three different decks per week, I pretty much learned at this point that you guys love Mono Black. So this one's for you guys. Let's get right into the deck tech, followed by the gameplay. Hope you enjoy. This video is sponsored by mtgonlinestore.com. For some cool and creative MTG apparel and accessories, everything from t-shirts to backpacks, check out mtgonlinestore.com and use promo code MARIN for 15% off your next order. And it also supports the show. Link is down below. If you wanted to pick up today's deck while also supporting the channel, you can get your cards from tcgplayer.com by clicking the decklist link down below. This video is supported by our generous patrons. If you wanted to join the marination as well, you can find our Patreon link down below in the description, and you'll also gain access to our Patreon-exclusive Discord server, where we discuss future Fan Fridays episodes as well as many other things. Mono Black Devotion is an archetype that we've come back to on the channel about three or four times now just because the deck keeps on evolving, and in today's case, we're trying out three new cards that we just got out of Modern Horizons. So let's check it out and see how they perform. Starting right off with our brand new snow package, we got two Arkham's Astrolabes just because they're cantrips, but mainly because they are snow artifacts, and that fuels our Dead of Winter. So Dead of Winter says all non-snow creatures get minus X minus X until end of turn, where X is the number of snow permanents you control. So it's like a one-sided board wipe, and we're gonna have a lot of snow swamps as well as Arkham's Astrolabe, and this will be pretty much like a toxic deluge in modern, so hopefully that works pretty well. And on to the rest of our Swamps Matters cards. Defile is a new Modern Horizons removal spell. A creature gets minus one, minus one until end of turn for each swamp we control. We want to keep hitting our land drops every turn. Liliana of the Dark Realms is a Liliana that never really sees play in Modern, but we're going to try it here today because it fetches us out a bunch of swamps. And it's minus three ability does the same thing that the card Defile does. Now minus six, we don't really care too much for, uh, but this is just going to help us hit our land drops, which it can be valuable, helped in the deck at least. And then we got a Singleton Lash Writhe. We do have Bitter Block so we can put this on there or put it onto any other one of our creatures but the creature is going to get plus one plus one for each swamp we control hopefully we will have a lot of swamps and it also is living weapons so it's going to make a germ token when it enters so at least it's going to do something right when it enters the battlefield and make an impact so on to the things that we're actually going to try to kill the opponent with we got three copies of bitter blossom adds a little bit of devotion devotion is not the most relevant thing in here only for gary um and gary is a huge part of this deck so i guess it matters but we get to create a one one black flying fairy at our upkeep and we can stack these on top of each other and just make a swarm and if we can control the opponent's board the bitter blossoms will just get there it's one of the most powerful things you can do on turn two in modern and then we got two copies of Phyrexian Obliterator, the traditional go-to beater for Mono Black Devotion, pairs very well with Grey Merchant to get all that devotion up so that when Grey Merchant enters, they're going to lose a ton of life and we're going to gain a ton of life. And onto our card advantage, we got Liliana the Veil, which is not technically card advantage, but it's card disadvantage for the opponent. Um, we're just going to discard useless things we don't need. Uh, kind of pairs pretty well with the other Liliana we got because we're just going to fetch out a bunch of swamps into our hand. And we can just discard them if we don't need any more. Phyrexian Arena is just a card draw engine. We draw two cards per turn instead of one. So in grinding matchups, it's going to help us out a lot. And then we got a little bit more removal in Fatal Push and then Vraska's Contempt. Now, uh, Vraska's Contempt is another one that you don't typically see in Modern. But uh, we could have just ran Hero's Downfall. But I wanted to pay the one more mana just to be able to gain the two life also exiling is nice just because between uh bitter blossom and phyrexian arena we are losing a lot of life um on our own terms so it'd be nice to gain a little bit back then we got a little bit of a hand disruption and a play set of inquisition of kozilek and two thought seas kind of a lot but in mono black there's certain things that we don't have answers to that we have to take out of the opponent's hand rather than answer things like artifacts and enchantments that mono black has a hard time dealing with and then on to the final spell of the deck. We're running a one of uh, Soren's Vengeance for funsies just because we can. Hopefully the uh, Liliana of the Dark Realms can get us enough swamps to get up to this quickly and Phyrexian Arena as well, making it so that we can always hit our land drops. And this is just like the nail in the coffin. It's just, it's gonna be fun. I just wanted to try it out. So it's gonna be pretty swagging if we can get this off. 
We got a total of 24 lands. We got a play set of Field of Ruins in there as well, and the Urborgs to turn them into swamps if we need that too. And then onto the sideboard, we got three copies of Nihil Spellbomb to deal with those graveyards. We got one copy of Ratchet Bomb, just because Mono Black does have a hard time dealing with artifacts and enchantments, so Ratchet Bomb can help with that. Then we got two copies of Surgical Extraction as additional Grave Hate, two copies of Collective Brutality, which is great for duress mode, but also good against burn and also killing small creatures if we need to. And we got two copies of Damping Sphere to help against Combo and Tron, two copies of Plague Engineer, which is really great against the tribal matchups, two copies of Damnation just because they sweep the board and that's pretty nice, and then single copy of Sorcerer Spyglass just because, again, we have a hard time dealing with uh, permanents that are not creatures, so Planeswalkers is included in that stack and being able to deal with a Teferi or a Karn or a Ugin or whatever is pretty nice. So that's about it. I'll get the stream started and I'll see you in the first round. All right. Got a game here against Coco Co 098 and yes, we're going to be on the play with some Black Snow Control. And I'm going to keep that. Looks good if we can hit our land drops. But Inquisition into Bitter Blossom looks like a very good one-two punch. Depending on what they're on. They have a niv Avatar, so I assume they're not aggro. Um... They might be some kind of is it phoenix so i guess it's called aggro inquisition them twiddle storm all right so let's take a twiddle because we gotta like ideas unbound do nothing without the psychic puppetry so um and when they go off we gotta hope that they have not two twiddles in hand because you need two untap effects a twiddle and a dreams grip or like you need two of those to be able to get that kickstart to go off or Psyche Pump Tree. And they had a Botanical Sanctum and an Island. You blocked off the bridge with Mahogany. If Mahogany, so its functionality is a hardtail. See, I, I'm not the biggest fan of Fenders because they're such high action. Like, I like my action to be super low because back when I played a lot of electric, I was more of a shreddy guitarist. And you can't really shred metal on a strat because of the high action. Like, you could, like, jam out to some classical kind of soloing, but I'm- or not some cla like, classical, but, you know, like, like, classic rock. All right, so let's thought seize them again. We unfortunately did not hit our land drop. Pass and flames, though I just mount. Take the dreams grip. All right, so screwing them over pretty good. So now they're in desperate need here. Ideas and bound to fix their hand. All right, they're gonna have to discard at their end steps. That's basically a faithless looting when they just cast a hyper faithless looting. Slide a hand. Yep. Now I'm scared. All right, slowly but surely grinding out with Bitter Blossom. Don't have a lot else we can really do. There's a Sylvan Scrying. All right, let's see if you can do it, buddy. See if you can do it. Lotus Field, all right. I think they're playing our exact list. It looks like our list. All right, they're not going off yet. They're saving it for next turn. And I still did not hit my lands. Still no lands. I have Gary, I'll be fine. No, I won't. I'm screwed. They're going off now. I'm gonna F6. There's a Psychic Puppetry, and yep, they got another Ideas Unbound. And uh, I mean, they net zero mana. They net zero mana, so we'll wait a second. We'll wait a second. Did they screw it up? I think they screwed it up. They weren't supposed to do that. They were supposed to ideas inbound. Yeah, they screwed up. They weren't supposed to do that. Yeah, that was that was definitely a misplay. All right, please give me a land. I want to get down these Garys. Thank you. Got to top deck one more. You were supposed to ideas and bound with a splice and arcane. That's what you were supposed to do. 
I think they done goofed. Do you feel like a proud parent watching your deck beat you? I mean, it's I didn't create the archetype. It was originally I I believe Corbin Hausler. I don't know who he got it from, but um I only I built it because I saw I saw it in when we went up against it in the previous gameplay video before playing Twiddle Storm. So whoever that was was the OG. But I took it into like I didn't copy his list at all because I just took it to Rooster Trees and brewed it on my own terms. I like he had some weird stuff like Vizier Tumbling Sands and pieces of the puzzle and stuff like that. I just I didn't think that that was needed. I brewed my own variant and this is what I came up with. And I've already ran into Kano Yagoro who was playing my list and um, people were mentioning my list and like Saffron Olive stuff and. And now Saffron's gonna play, I don't know if he's gonna play my list, but De Saffron's gonna play it. And he's got beaten by my list before. And um, people are like talking about my list on like Reddit and stuff and it's just everywhere. But I, I think that, okay, so I didn't create the deck. I, I brewed my own, my own list of it, but I think what I did is I popularized the deck. I, I, I put it on, I was the first one to put it on YouTube and I made it a thing. Um, so that's that's all I did, but I, I didn't create the archetype. But I guess I feel somewhat like a proud parent watching it. You're so humble, it's adorable. That's all I do, man. All right, Flash is back. How many Twiddles do they got? One, one, two. Yeah, it's it's definitely over. I, I mean, they could definitely screw up again in Misclick because it looks like they didn't know what they were doing earlier, but I'm just gonna do the right thing and I know that they, they can get it from there and I'll concede out of respect. Um, on to sideboarding, gonna bring in Collector Brutality and Surgical Extraction. And uh, maybe they might bring in Empty the War and so I'll bring in a Ratchet Bomb. Um, we can go ahead and cut, like, mm, Dead of Winter does what Ratchet Bomb does, but I'm not gonna go off of that. I'll just cut that stuff. What do I not want? I probably don't want removal spells at all. Let's cut all this. Oh, definitely bring in Damping Spheres. And Nihil Spell Bombs. And we can cut... The Sorens, or we can cut the Lilies of the Dark Realms. Yo, what's up, Inquisitor Jesus? Thanks for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Um, yeah, let's cut. Let's cut one Lily. And probably Sorens Vengeance. Nah. That the reason that the Sorens Vengeance is there is for the Lily. <sighs> oh yeah, Roscoe's Contempt, that's right. We got another removal spell, so bring back in a Lily, I guess. Alright, run it like this. Yes, I would like to be on the play. Alright, I'll keep that. We need help with this hand. We definitely need some stuff. Pretty sure Reddit popularized it. There were Reddit threads about this weeks ago. Yeah, I saw, I saw a couple Reddit threads, but they were like... They were not really, like, big. And then I did a Reddit thread and it was- it was big. Um, yeah, this looks like my list. Alright, let's take one of the ideas and bound. Seer Visions, okay. Man, give me some bombs. Twiddle, ideas and bound, passing flames. All right, let's take a twiddle. Neil Spellbomb will hold up for passing flames, and this should do good. What they going for? All right, they're not gonna ideas and bound. They're gonna wait. Um, let's just feel the ruin them. And I'm getting flooded. 
Don't have another basic. Come on. No, they had another basic. See if they try to go off now. Yep, there is the lotus field. All right, show it to me. Show me your combo process. Dreams grip. They're gonna tap Neil Spellbomb and oh they can untwine, right? For how much? It doesn't show me the full card. Come on, Moto, it's literally showing me half of the text box. I would like to see the rest of the text box. Alright, well I guess I have to use this now. Okay. Are you going to show me the rest of the card? There we go. Entwine for two. All right, so that is a that was a thing. All right, now they can go for it. Do they have the psychic puppetry though? Is the question because they need the psychic puppetry to go off. Don't don't use the psychic puppetry, dude. Okay, thank you. They made the right play. Now they can go red. Now let's see what they get with this Ideas Unbound. They can definitely whiff. Or they go Mama, Mama Morphos. Another Mama Morphos. It's weird that there is now Simic Storm. <laughs> it was... It was... Uh, is it Storm? But now it's kind of Simic Storm. But I guess you can call this Teamer Storm because it does have Pass and Flames, but... Okay, you better have another one in there. So you can't respond. You can't- you cannot splice a puppetry onto a puppetry because there's nowhere in between to respond. So you cannot do that. So now they can go ahead and Pass and Flames. And we know they have a second puppetry. Why? Dude, stop. You're not supposed to play the deck like that. Now you cannot splice from your graveyard. So they screwed up. You have to keep... Okay. Yo, if you're watching this on YouTube, if you're watching this on YouTube, CocoCo098, please keep a puppetry in your hand when you pass in flames because all these, these uh, like, ideas, whatever, you have to splice an arcane and you can only splice an arcane if this is in your hand. So you got to keep one puppetry in your hand. I mean, no, 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 Phil, I wouldn't say what a noob because this deck is one of the hardest decks to learn. It's, it's a very, it's got, this deck's got a serious learning curve. Like a pro could pick this up and not know how to play it like the first couple games and then learn, okay, this is how I do it. Because it seriously took me like a half hour sitting down trying the deck over and over to figure out the lines of play you have to do to go off. Like, it's not as simple as just do this, do this, do this. Like, you gotta learn the lines of play with this deck. It's pretty, it's pretty complicated at first. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a little complicated to learn. But I think they screwed themselves by uh, using both of their psychic puppetries. I mean, they still have a lot of time to win, though, because I have nothing going on. And if they drew the Grape Shot already, they can kill us. Wait, why? Opponent, you're not supposed to do that. Or do you have the Grape Shot? Are you going for game? Did they just draw all four? See, look at that. You could have spliced an arcane there before you did that. Yeah, I, I think that the opponent just doesn't know how to play it. There it is. All right. Perfect. All right. So the opponent kind of luckily got there because it looked like they were doing all the wrong plays. So I, I think that they need to work on, on the way they play the deck. I hope they're watching that on YouTube so they can take my advice, but... 
Twiddlestorm taking us down, and I'm actually happy about that because Twiddlestorm is really cool. Got a game here against Rembo, and yes, we're going to be on the play with some Black Snow, and that looks like a good keep. Let's keep that. Perfect distribution of lands and spells. Got two hand disruption and the arena to refuel, so that looks like exactly what we want to see. All right, it's against Affinity, so it's going to be tough. So let's take the Cranial Plating because we can't deal with that. Was there a Ink Moth in there? I did not see. Let's check. There is Snow Ink Moth, Double Spire of Industry. They top back to Mox, so they can go signal past Springleaf Drum here. All right, no Springleaf Drum. And now we can actually Inquisition that Ravager, so that is nice. Never mind, change of plans, we are going Bitter Blossom. We're going to take a lot of damage here, but it's worth it. You rage quit today and haven't got back on? Because of the ducks? You don't got ducks, so you're sad? I'm sad too, Osu fan. I wish I had ducks. But we're getting the ducks probably in the next stream. Probably. Most likely in the next stream. Alright, so I know what I'm chump blocking. Alright, let's always yield a bitter blossom. And we even have the Field of Ruin for a, for a thing. Alright, get down the arena, hopefully draw a Dead of Winter. And a removal spell. Oh, we got a removal spell for that, uh, Master of Ethereum. But the problem is they're going to have a Ravager now. And the Ravager's going to be able to sack it in response so I don't gain any life. Another Signal Pest. Man, I really need a Dead of Winter now. All right, we are chump blocking. I'm hoping for no Mystic Forge. That'd be scary. I just gotta survive to get off the Soren's Vengeance. There's a Swamp. Oh, there's a Gary. Nice. All right, so we are going to pass and just Soren's Vengeance. Or not Soren's Vengeance. We're gonna pass and Vraska's Contempt. Gain a little bit of life back. Hopefully they don't sack it to Ravager in response. So we can block one of the signal pests here. Block a signal pest. Contempt that. They're going to sack it to Ravager. We're not going to gain life. Galv Blast is becoming a real threat at this point. You rage quit before you realize there's no ducks. You're hoping for ducks for comfort. The ducks are there. They're, they're there on the other side of the fence. I'm telling you, Osu, they're, they're on the other side of the fence. They're getting all prepared, getting all bathed and washed up for the stream. Land, come on! Oh no! Alright, let's Inquisition you, see what you got. Ooh, they didn't play that Master of Ethereum. Nice! And now we can... Uh, just pass. Okay, I was about to use Field of Ruin this turn, but now I know what I'm using it on. But I can't do it now because they can activate the Blink Moth and sack it in response. Declare blocks there, and then let's push. Nice, they did that first. I like it. Yeah, so now I can feel the ruin that. So now we're looking good. We are looking good. Gotta hit my land drops, though. Spirit ducks? 
They're not spirit ducks. They're alive. They're they're over there in the garden. Okay, they're in the fence. In the fence line. They're there. I'm telling you. Where's my lands? Give me lands. All right. Well, we are going to feel a ruin on the blink moth. And do I throw out another bitter blossom is the question. No, I don't think so because I'd be dead to Galv Blast if they draw an artifact, but we're not dead to it, like... I don't think so. I, I don't think I do play it. I'd be getting a little dangerously low and I don't like that. I want to gain a little bit of life first. So we can start going attacking now. They have an artifact. Yeah, they only got two artifacts, though, so if they get a Gal Blast, it's only two damage, but I don't want them to go, like, artifact and then have me whiff on a land again. Like, I have Arena. I should hit my lands. I should hit my lands. There's no reason for me not to hit a land here. Like, by laws of Magic the Gathering, I should hit a land here. Thank you. Gary, get out here. Back up to 10. They're down to 14. Super Siege Rhino. Go attacking. They can go ahead and chump one. Take one. And we are two lands away from Soren's Vengeance. They just drew a Spire of Industry. That don't do it. And there's another land. And there's a Lily. So let's get down Lily. Let's get you to sack a creature. Let's get out another Bitter Blossom. And go attacking. And if I draw a land, I Sword's Vengeance. <laughs> I'm hoping that's the case. I don't want to get janked out by Galv Blast. Mem Knight. Nice card. I could have pushed that, but I have six. It's too late. And there's a land. All right, we're doing it. I'm not even going to attack. Sword's Vengeance, you. Explosion. <laughs> ten to you. I gain ten. And you are at negative two. On the sideboarding. Uh, we are going to bring in Sorcerer Spyglass to hopefully name like Ravager or Steel Overseer or something. Going to bring in some more Wraths. Plague Engineers naming Construct is pretty nice. Uh, Brutality is just more removal. Ratchet Bomb on two is pretty nice. Uh, we're gonna cut Bitter Blossom. I know it is good for blocking, like, Mem Knights and, and, and their lands and their signal pests and stuff, but it's very painful. Same with, like, Phyrexian Arena. I think it's just a little bit too painful. I don't like Lily here. Let's cut Lily. I guess we bring back in two Arenas. And we can cut... Alright, that's it. Yeah, just leave it like that. So let's submit it right back. Yeah, I could bring in another arena over like an astrolabe, but it's whatever. I think this is fine. We can win with obliterators and Garys. Throwing out another bitter blossom seems like a good way to die, but it still worked out anyway. Antifa Lockhart, what's up, Tap Pudding? Been a long time since I've seen you in here. Good to have you back. All right, it's cooling down a little bit. It's still very hot in here, but still, it's not as hot as it was when the stream started. Okay, this looks like a good hand. I'll keep this. Hopefully we can take a Ravager or like an Etch Champion. Let's hope for a not insane turn one. And I definitely want to get a Mystic Forge out of their hand if possible, because that would be a very difficult card to beat, especially since we have no artifact kill. So it'd be very difficult to actually win through a Mystic Forge. Usually you finish streaming before you're back home, so you tend to miss on weekday streams. Oh, but you're back home early today. It's only 5.03 p.m.
Blink Mob Nexus into Vault Skeerge into nothing. Alright, play a land Inquisition. You hope to hit either a Ravager or an Etch Champion or a Cranial Plating. And that is an Etch Champion. Oh, they got Experimental Frenzy. Okay, I'm gonna have to Thought Seeds them next turn. What was the rest of their hand? They also had Blink Moth Nexus. Alright, so I don't think I have to- like, if they top deck Mox Opal, they can cheat out the Frenzy first. But not if I, uh, not if I Brutality. So, I can wait a turn. Yeah, I can wait a turn. I don't have to Thought Seize now. I, I mean, I could go Astrolay plus Thought Seize, but then again, I can just Brutality now. But do I really want a Brutality of Vault Scourge? Probably not. So yeah, let's just go Thought Seize. Get that stupid thing out of the hand. And they got a Blink Moth left, play a Swamp, and follow up with the Astrolabe. Cantrip. Oh, that is a good one. Is that a Construct? Please tell me that is. It's an Imp. How is that? That doesn't look like an Imp. It's like a Wasp. Looks like a Bee. I always thought it was like a Wasp. Because, like, there's this card called Vector Asp, and it looks just like it. Alright, so let's... Or what are these? They are... Comes a 1-1 Blink Moth. I mean, that's annoying. We could just push that... Push that and then Brutality one of these. And then we can, uh... Yeah, these turn into Blink Moths. Yeah, we can Plague Engineer on Blink Moth, right? I'm okay with that. Because I don't want this to be active and, and use it on their lands. Like, that'd be annoying. And then we can go minus two, minus two on one of here, on one of these. And then pass. All right. I kind of do want an arena. It feels like this deck always wants to have an arena. It feels like that's just like the best card. Ravager. Uh-oh. It's not what we wanted to see. Um, you know, we do have double field of ruin. Do we really care about the blink moths? Okay, you know, the problem is if I do play a plague engineer, they're probably going to sack a blink moth in response. Gotta do it though, right? I think so. Plague engineer, come on, let it sit. Don't do anything. Thank you. All right, so hit, uh, Blink Moth. And hit Blink Moth with it. Why not Confidant? Because Arena is more reliable for a control deck. It doesn't die to removal, and it doesn't lose as much life. And that's the reason I had to put, like, Vraska's Attempt over Hero's Downfall in a place at a Gary's, and then a Soren's Vengeance, because we need to gain life. Because Bitter Blossom plus Arena is enough life loss. And Thoughtseize, not to mention Thoughtseize as well. So it's just like very painful. I was so close to even putting like Moment of Craving in here just because the life, the life loss really hurts. So a Dark Confidant would be even more painful. Uh, Inquisition does nothing, so it's time to throw out Gary. Get in for just a Siege Rhino, just a little bit. Just a little tiny bit. All right, if I go attacking with Plague Engineer, they go sack both their dudes, clear a block, and they can start playing. Yeah, that's not good for me. Just pass. I can start attacking with Gary, though. Max RS, dang Apple computers. Yeah, I've never liked the Apple brand. I've always been, um, like, I've always used Windows over, over Mac. It's just, like, it's more reliable to me. I've been using it, like... For as long as I've been using computers. Nerd Rage. Yeah, Windows 10 has its problems, and especially the most recent update sucks, by the way. Um, I hate it. <laughs> but whatever. Okay, I I kind of don't even wanna uh feel the ruin then because I, I think that I'm fine, like. Oh no, that's a steel overseer. Uh-oh. I think that I'm fine, you know, like. Having them not have access to red, which they just top decked. 
Dang, Steel Overseer. All right, I definitely need to draw a Wrath now. Definitely need to draw a Wrath. Maxim are reliable. It's their whole shtick. You can't do anything else with them. I haven't, like... Like, what What are they better than over, over Windows? Like, name, name something. You know, like... Tell me what's better about them. I, I, okay, I literally just, during my internet, like, session yesterday, I don't know what you call going on the internet, but just searching random stuff, I think I heard that, um, somebody offered a million dollars, or Apple offered a million dollars to whoever can hack an iPhone. So I'm guessing that Apple products are like impenetrable fortresses to hackers, like, Maybe they're very protected. And I just got super flooded. See, it's like either we're getting ultra flooded or ultra screwed. It's never in between. And so that's that's probably the problem. Like, I, I feel like I probably need to go up to a play set of Phyrexian Arena and just like screw, screw everything else. All right, let's cut Astrolabe. Maybe I want Bitter Blossoms back in like on the play. All right. Cut an astrolabe. Go full on. Full on life loss. So why would you hack an iPhone that only has a small amount of people buy? You know, iPhones are the most bought phones. What are you talking about? Nobody buys like Samsung Galaxies anymore. It's all iPhones. Have we even hit a wrath effect those games? No. I actually have never drawn a wrath effect. Never. I mean, we did have one against, uh, I'm not going to spoil it for the YouTube's sake, but there was one matchup where we really wanted it, but never hit our fourth land. So, like, it's like this deck looks like we're either getting land screwed or land flooded. It's just because we don't have much cantrips. We don't have fetches, really. So it's like, maybe the deck has that problem. So I feel like maybe Lily's not even the way to go. And just go play set of Phyrexian Arena. Just, we want all the card draw. Just like, because card draw is the best thing you can do. And and just go ultra, like, cheap control. And maybe even Moment of Craving. Just because we want the Bitter Blossom because it's a very great, like, mid-game win con. And then just be able to control the board. And then just eventually drop Gary would be nice. So I would definitely play a different variant of this. Would you like to play first? Yes, I will. Um, I'm going to keep this because maybe I can um, Inquisition a Cranial Plating, let them overcommit, and then Wrath. So, and I do have the lands for it. And then I also feel a Ruin to hit like an Ink Moth or Blink Moth, so that's pretty nice. Do you consider running Ramping Lily? We do run Ramping Lily. That is in the deck list. Alright, let's Inquisition. Try to hit something that is non-creature. Stubborn Denial is definitely something that we gotta deal with. Another cranial plating, dude. Another cranial plating. Um, well, I kind of wanna hit one of the cranial platings. But then again, maybe they're just redundant. Maybe we're supposed to just remove creatures. And maybe once I draw um uh what do you call it? Ratchet bomb, I can just hit both the platings because Maybe hitting one isn't worth it. Hitting Ravager buys us a lot of time. Yeah, I'm thinking Ravager is the one that... Taking that buys us a lot of time to, like, draw stuff. I want to draw an Arena. I want an Arena or a Bitter Blossom. Bitter Blossom would be so nice right now. It'd be such a nice top deck right here. Brutality. Well, Brutality can at least duress that thing out of their hand. Or do I just kill the Mem Knight? Or do I save it? You know, I have the push for something if, if something becomes a problem. I think I'll just take their, take their uh, thing. Their Stubborn Denial. They have three Cranial Platings in hand. I repeat, three Cranial Platings. Alright, so I definitely need that Ratchet Bomb. Now, we are currently on Operation Never Allow the Opponent to Get Cranial Plating Attached to a Creature. But we are on Operation Remove Everything right now. Alright, I'm not gonna even play a Field of Ruin attempt myself to use one. Operation Shove Off, exactly.
Oh no, he topped a Ravager. All right, so I'm gonna let this go and I'm going to, oh wait, okay, good. I'm gonna let this go and I'm a Wrath. I'll take six, I'll take six. Thoughtseize. All right, Wrath. Okay, now we're in a little bit of a uh, a cucumber or a pickle because we need to draw goodies. We don't have the goodies. Now they got Blink Moth too, so we're going to have to feel to ruin that. I don't even want to Thought Seize the last Cranial Plating. I don't even want to. I just want to draw a Ratchet Bomb. That's all I'm looking for. Yeah, they can't cast that last one. That's an Ink Moth. It's a Blink Moth. Okay, that's pretty nice. But we currently don't have the mana for it. But we will next turn. Uh, let's just pass. And we will save this Field of Ruin for a future Ink Moth or Blink Moth. There's no X Champion, please. Just I don't want to see an Edge Champion. Wow, another Ravager. Push that now. Get it out. You know, playing a Phyrexian and Obliterator would totally stonewall them right there. Alright, time for the four turn clock. Opponent, can you whiff on creatures for a second? Can you hold on? And whiff on creatures real quick, please. Don't tell me you drew the fourth Ravager. Thank you! <laughs> Alright, oh, and the arena. Nice. Alright, I'm gonna Thought Seize them and see what they got. Oh! The Frenzy! They didn't have the mana for it. They were one short. Alright, we got the arena out. All right, I'm feeling a little bit better. We could still get flooded. We could still get flooded. But we have the mana for Soren's Vengeance now. Oh, no, we don't. We're one short. We got the mana for anything. The only thing that we don't want to draw is more Hand Disruption. Defile is a pretty nice top deck. It's another removal spell. And now we have the mana for Soren's Vengeance. Plating doesn't trample, so unless they got a flyer, yeah. Rexing and Blader would stonewall the heck out of them. Nice. More removal is always welcome. They have to draw a dispatch here. If they don't draw a dispatch, we got him. We got him. Master of Ethereum, that finna die. Yep. Alright, so now we have to Field of Ruin their Spire of Industry. Get a Swamp. Now we have seven Swamps. Now we can Defile Master of Ethereum. Minus seven, minus seven. And that is the game. See if the opponent wants to save some time. And they do. And we took down Infinity. I told you. Never get rid of Fraxian Arenas. I don't think Lily is what you want for this deck. I think you just want the play set of Arenas. Because since this deck runs 24 lands, no fetches, it's either you get totally flooded or totally screwed. So Arena is great. Definitely want Arena. Got a game here against Sir Vamp 95 And this guy plays Vampires. We know that because we fought him before. Um... Inquisition Thought Season a couple pushes. That sounds like a good hand against vampires, so let's keep that. It is hot in here. Watch him play elves. Nah, dude, he's vampires all the way. Watch him be playing vampire aristocrats like we played last week. Watch. And then have this hand do like nothing. <laughs> That'd be awesome. 
Or if he's like Sora in Imperius Blood Lord to like cheat in um, Champion of Dusk. Or like Vampire Nighthawk. Or what, what do you call it? Vampire Nocturnus? What if he's that kind of vampires? All I know is he is playing with Sora in Imperius Blood Lord. Because obviously. Alright, let's see. Show me them vampires. Show them to me. It is vampires. All right, so Dusk and Zelda, Blood Gas, Conquistador, Conquistador. All right, let's take Dusk Legion Zealot because it's annoying. I can push. I can push the other things, but Dusk Legion Zealot is a, it's a cantrip, so I can push the two Conquistadors. The Blood Gasts are what going to be uh, impossible to deal with for us. I should have put Unmake in this deck. You remember growing vamps to the point of blocking Hogak? Yeah, we did that. You played against two Twiddlestorm decks today in Qs. The deck is awesome. Yeah, it's getting, it's really getting out there. My video has like, like 16,000, I think 17,000 views now. Yeah, it's got like 17,000 views. Crazy. People love that deck. All right, what have they got now? I'll take the other Conquistador. And let's just push this now, preserve our life total. And I need to draw some goodies, because I currently don't have goodies, so I would like to draw goodies. I would like a Bitter Blossom or a Brexian Arena or something. Not a Lily. A Lily would suck here. Defile, I mean, I guess that kills something, but doesn't kill it very good. Doesn't kill it very dead. Whittle me timbers? What does that mean? Never heard that before. Alright, blood gas getting in there. We're not gonna kill those, so it's gonna be difficult. Alright, they got their little Urborg Mutavolt combination going on. There's the Soren. Alright, so now he can cheat out another vampire or he can just start putting counters, which he does put a counter. There's an arena. All right, let's play the arena. And I'm hoping the opponent puts another counter on that blood ghast. And now I'm hoping to draw Vraska's Contempt. Vraska's Contempt would be nice. Activates Mutavault. All right, so I'd rather probably push Mutavault here. All right, push Mutaval, get that out of the way. More like Snorin, am I right? I don't know, dude, because this Soren's pretty awesome, in my opinion. This dude's sweet. But you know what really, really, really rock the rock the socks in this game is Gary. Gary would be sweet. All right, so they're gonna sack that to Helix us. That's fine. And then they're going to play a land and get it back, and then play the second one. We know that. But now, their blood gases are going to have haste from now on. Plays a silent clearing, gets it back. And plays the second one, I assume. Alright. Arena doing work. Let's see what we get. Bitter Blossom Lily. Alright, so as much as I want to play that, I think I can. It can be a it can be a deterrent. Like they might want to attack Lily. So let's get our land drop. Fetch a swamp, play a swamp. And we'll defile something. To preserve our life total. Did do Rees Morrow's tweet what new color fairy is gonna be? Is the, our fairies gonna be green? I assume they might be green because Tinkerbell doesn't seem very blue and black in my opinion. Uh, probably um, green. A distraction. What's up, Voodoo Gremlin? There are green fairies, actually. Yeah, there is. Back in the old times, like uh, Elvish Spirit Guide and whatnot.
So opponent's going after our face and ignoring Lily. Alright, they're starting to helix us with Soren, so this has become a problem. So we need to find Verasa's Contempt or Gary right now or we lose. So we have two top decks to find it. Let's see what we get. Come on, Gary. Come on, Gary, or we lose. That is not Gary. Alright, so let's play... Death. We're dead. Alright, on to sideboarding against vampires. Gotta bring in some more rats, and the plague engineers would be great. The plague engineers. Bring in the collector brutalities because they're a kill spell. Bring in a sorcerer spyglass because it hits Soren. Bring in a ratchet bomb because it can sweep. Um, bring in Surgical because it hits Blood Gas, and those are super annoying. Uh, Neil Spell Bomb can also hit Blood Gas because, our, but I think that's kind of cute. Uh, let's cut, let's cut, I think, one Arena, one Bitter Blossom. Let's cut, uh, Thought Seed, but I want to hit the Soren out of their hand. I guess Astrolabe's filler. Uh, you know what, maybe, maybe a Bitter Blossoms and... Brexian arenas are too painful here, and maybe we just want to win with like Garys and like Obliterators and like Lilianas and stuff. Like we're we're gonna run very low on win cons if we take this stuff out, but I think it's right to preserve our life total, probably. And maybe I don't need Ratchet Bomb. I'll cut Ratchet Bomb. And Collector Brutality is just another kill spell, basically. So maybe I don't need that. So let's cut the Bitter Blossoms, or let's cut the Collector Brutalities and bring back in a Singleton Braxian Arena. All right, let's try it like that. Would you like to play first? Yes. Um, We got Plague Engineer, we got a push. So I'm gonna keep this in hope to draw lands because Plague Engineer into Lily get us a land for Grey Merchant. Seems pretty decent. Maybe they print the Green Simeon Spirit Guide. Yeah, that's the Elvish Spirit Guide. That's what I was talking about, Phil. Elvish Spirit Guide is indeed a green fairy. And I do play it in my Tatiova CEDH deck. Because you gotta get out Tatiova as fast as possible. So, Spirit Guide effect is needed. Alright, I will go ahead and push that now. I hear the neighbors turning up the music very loud, so hopefully they don't turn it up much louder. To where it's heard in the video. Let me know in the comment section down below if you can hear that music. Alright, play a Field of Ruin and pass the turn. Thankfully, the opponent played an Urborg, which could actually help us here because we have the Field of Ruin. And we have the Phyrexian Obliterator. And not much to hit with the Field of Ruin, so thankfully the opponent played that and it helps us out a lot. Vampire Lacerator is thick. Um, come on, land. That is not a land. Alright, we just need a land. Just need a land. And then this Plague Engineer can do work. Although, it's not going to really matter because Soren can helix a Plague Engineer. And they didn't hit a land either. Oh, they keep hitting creatures though. They're doing good. Land? Okay, well I guess that is uh, saving us damage, so push that. Keep draining their life with the Lacerator. We just need a... Uh... Oh, we got nothing but four and five drops after that Plague Engineer. We'll take the one, or the two. They should complete the Spirit Guide color cycle? Yeah, they should. They only made green and red. Shoutouts to Brian Kibler. Man, they keep having all the one drops. Dude, where's my lands? Where's- I'm running 24 lands in here with no fetches except Field of Ruin. Like, literally, I'm supposed to be getting flooded. <laughs> Including uh, an Eldrazi spirit guide? Yeah, that'd be sick, dude. Like a spawn spirit guide. And they got the cantrip to find their next land. Okay, this is getting very scary. But you know what would very much help here? Plague Engineer. Come on. Come on, come on, come on. Right here, land. Off the top. Thank you. All right. This is gonna wreck them. Destroy two things. Alright, Vampire. Man, Plague Engineer is so good. 
Everybody needs some of these for their sideboards in modern. Although it is just gonna get Helix by a Sorin. But that's fine. Um we we do have the Veroska's Contempt for the Sorin, so that's good. And we'll be able to follow up with uh Obliterator into Obliterator into Gary, and I think that that is going to be the nail in the coffin. They shock a Godless Shrine. Okay, so they are black white. I assume it's for like Path to Exile and like sideboard cards, like Stony Silence and whatnot, and and like Disenchant. Because they gotta have an answer in there to Ensnaring Bridge, so that's probably what the white's for. Probably for Fragmentize. And Helix is going to hit Plague Engineer. So I do gotta hit a land here. See what we get. Come on. Come on, deck. Don't be lame. No! Alright, well, I am going to feel the ruin the Dogless Shrine. Get that white source out of there. I did just in the deck. Anti-synergy, but still. Uh, if the board gets too overwhelming, we do got the Wrath, so at least there's that. And they have the blood gas. No, I didn't want to see that, dude. I didn't want to see that. Are they gonna cheat something out with Soren? They are. Man, don't be a five drop. Don't be a champion of dusk. Vampire Nocturnus. Okay, I definitely need the wrath if I can. Gotta hit the land. I gotta hit the land here, dude. I gotta hit the land here. Please. No, man. I'm running 24. 24. Am I dead? This is getting pushed. All right. Oh wait, that's not a push, that's an Inquisition. Okay, well, if the, if the Nocturnus doesn't hit a black card off the top, I think we live. They got another Sorin. Well, that blood gas is useless, but it's gonna have haste, right? Yeah. No, it won't. All right. I'm taking the second Soren because I'm planning on pushing the other, or uh, contempting the other one. Yeah, magic is a game of skill, Joakovo. Definitely a game of skill. It's no luck involved whatsoever. Everybody, like, plays, plays the game fairly. And no, not one person has to, like, be at a disadvantage ever. Because, you know, that's how, that's how Wizards created the land system so that it's fair all around. You know, you, you play lands in your deck and, and you, you draw them and um, you get to cast your spells with them, but yeah, totally, totally game of skill. And they didn't have a black card on top. All right, so what are we going to here? Six. Oh, but they're hitting a land up the top, so double. Okay, so we're dead here, basically. There, I don't think there's anything we can do. Yeah. We're, we're dead. Because we didn't hit the land there, we're dead. That sucks, man. We would've been able to Wrath and then Contempt the Sorin. We took the other Sorin with Inquisition, and then we'd had double, double Obliterator into Gary. Man, but we drew every, every four drop and five drop in our deck. Like, every single one was in our hand. Man, what a, that's like one of the most unfortunate things that could possibly happen with this deck with like that kind of draw like literally draw nothing but the most expensive cards and no lands that's crazy yo what up guys post-production marin here with the normal speed up sessions we usually do to make sure the video is one hour as opposed to being two hours save a little bit of time as i always say if you wanted to catch the full games unsped up uncut from the video you can go to the twitch link down below in the description and watch the entire vod there so we end up going up against an as foretold deck and um a couple games didn't make it into the video and uh we actually went up against as foretold twice today and uh, this was the second time, I believe. So we had a pretty regular draw here and we're beaten down pretty effectively. We go uh, Frexian Arena or Frexian uh, Obliterator into Gary, uh, forcing them to chump block here and they sack the rest of their permanents because of the claws on Frexian Obliterator. And we finish them off with the toasty Soren's Vengeance. So we got the swag kill there. We bring in Surgical Extractions to try to hit those combo pieces like As Foretold and stuff. And uh, we go into the next game, and we get a pretty regular draw here. We need to draw a little bit of lands. They get the stupid Narset, um, and Narset completely shuts down our Phyrexian Arena. 
Getting Lily down is pretty nice. The Narset completely shuts down Arena, so now I don't have a whole lot I can really do. Like, I don't got a lot of good stuff to really do. And one of the other matchups made into the video was a Narset deck, and it's just impossible to beat that. Like, that card is so annoying. Now, I screwed this game up, okay? Because I had Ratchet Bomb, I decided, oh, I'm gonna take it up and just F6 to save time. But I didn't know they had Crashing Footfalls. I did not know that. And then they ended up casting three Crashing Footfalls when I could have had that Ratchet Bomb on zero. If I didn't decide to just F6 to save time and just, and I never ticked up that Ratchet Bomb and I was just passing normal priority like, a, like any normal player would, we would have been able to blow them out there and just get all the Rhinos and be able to stay alive and probably win. Going on to the next game. I really got to get out this Lily. I just got to draw a land. I really need a land. And then they, I don't get the land for Lily. And then they got Restore Balance as foretold. And now I'm screwed. And uh, we sack all our lands and they get there. So this just goes to show what's been happening all day. I'm going to be real with you here. I'm just going to go ahead and throw out the spoilers. Every match that didn't make it in this video were losses because we were getting land screwed all day. As you've even seen in the previous rounds and as you will see in this round as well. Nothing but land screw or land flood today. I, I swear to you, don't, don't lose all faith in mono black devotion. It's just that we got super unlucky today. It's either we're getting super screwed or super flooded and that was one of those times going on to this game we end up going up against tron we're able to uh field ruin them a couple times to kind of screw over their tron and thought sees all the stuff in their hands so they got nothing anymore and they happen to top deck um they top deck they top deck tron naturally here we kill two of their tron lands they top deck naturally the tower they needed and ancient stirrings top deck into oblivion stone wipe our entire board that we were about to beat them with and I was just salty at this point because that was just like the most crazy luck. But Tron always gets that luck. It's just every time we go up against Tron, they get the net. And then like icing on the cake, they top deck Ulamog after that. And here's another showing of the land screw that kills us. So we have uh, the surgical extraction. We got a couple hand disruption spells to like take them down early and, and disrupt their hand. We get the field of ruin. It's like, okay, if we draw one land, we can feel the ruin and then surgically extract their Tron land and then Lily will make them ditch their entire hand and this bitter blossom will kill them. But what do you know? We whiff a land. When turn goes by, we whiff a land. They get Tron, they get Karn, and then we're dead because we didn't hit a land. And that's what's been happening all day long. Nothing but land scoot or land flood, but don't lose faith in mono black. So we ended up with one win. This was the worst record we've had in over a year. And I just now realized that we didn't put in Lash Rive. So that was a little screw up on my part. And um, I hope you guys enjoyed the deck regardless. Let me know what you would do to change it. But like I always say, there's, or like I said in the intro, there's so many ways to build mono black devotion. The deck keeps evolving and changing. And in this case, I wanted to try the snow package. Although as it turns out today, we got nothing but either land screwed or land flooded. Every game, every, I'm telling you every single game, maybe there was like three games total in the entire like 14 game video where we didn't get like either land screwed or land flooded but most of the time it was either land screwed or land flooded because we're a 24 de 24 land deck with no fetches and uh, not many cantrips so it's prone to happen most decks have a little bit of filtering here and there or some ramp so sometimes it doesn't happen for certain decks but uh it was that was a problem for us but it felt like things were always better when we had a phyrexian arena i feel like this deck I honestly feel like Lily sucked today. Lily did nothing today. It, it would have been great against Control, but Control can answer it easily. So if you like cut Lilies and just go to a playset of Arena, maybe a little bit more card draw, it is painful, but it just feels like Phyrexian Arena is the best thing. It feels like we always wanted it, and it feels like the only hands we ever got that were good had Phyrexian Arena. And just like without it, it just felt horrible. It's like either Lily or Arena can can make a hand decent and keepable. But besides that, the hands just look awful. And just like, I think you definitely want another color. Splash green, you know, it doesn't have to be mono black. Getting access to Assassin's Trophy, maybe Goyf. Like, and Bitter Blossom was another thing where it's just like, we really want that on turn two or, or else it feels like we don't have enough aggression because then the deck is looking like, all right, four lands, push, Thoughtseize, Gary and that hand's like not good. Gary needs some help. 
maybe you run necropotence i don't know but phyrexian arena helps out a lot i don't know i just feel like there's there's definitely a bunch of ways to build this deck and we could build it a bunch of different ways every other time we played mono black devotion on the channel we did much better just didn't do too well today in today's meta today's meta has shifted a lot and there's a lot more things that just mono black doesn't deal with and um that's just the harsh reality of it right now so i, I don't think that mono black is in a good position right now Although we can wait till the meta evolves until Wizards bans Hogak because they have to. It's pretty obvious. And um, yeah, the, the meta will be in a different place one day and maybe Mono Black will be better. But definitely this was a wacky and um, experimental version of Mono Black. So don't count your Mono Black, your Mono Black deck out because of this one. Today we just got... I would say that I'm, I'm not trying to be salty here or whatever, but today we just got very unlucky. It was just a very unlucky series of events. And so your, your mono black, your mono black deck that you have, if you do have one, or if you're building one could do a lot better. It's just that we got very unlucky. And, um, I would say that's probably true. It, it showed in, in the video, like either our opponents luck sacked or we just got totally land screwed land flooded. So. Regardless, I hope you enjoyed the journey. Hit that like button if you did, and let me know what deck you want to see for a future video, and go ahead and follow the social media. Links are down below. Sorry about all the background noise today. There's a neighbors having a party, but thank you to the patrons, and thank you to the sponsors, and everybody who followed on Twitch. And Red Jar, thanks for the follow, and we're going to get it out of here. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video. Peace out.